Welcome to our presentation about the new MDC library, which has been become public uh, recently. And uh, Stefan has mentioned in the keynote uh, already. And here, I'm glad that we have Thomas Newton Larsen with us, who will explain now in more detail what this library is. And Thomas is uh, deeply involved from the very beginning in the development also of the smart controls. Uh, and then later of the MDC controls, um, which we will now he will now introduce. And yeah, please welcome Thomas. What is this library all about? So, so we try to ease the application development in the sense that when you build many applications, you're often confronted with the problem that uh, you want to build value help, you want to integrate a certain uh, form of end user personalization, you want to present in a consistent way tables, filter bars, uh, charts, and even also fields. And all of this is not maybe a big problem if you if you only uh, develop an only a single application but if you develop many applications you will realize and with many fields and many screens you will realize that uh, to make sure that all of this is consistent and maybe even even also uh, with some more complex uh, functionalities as being able to search on a pop up uh, for for some customer items it can be quite involving to build such uh, stuff. And, and uh, I think you have, many of you have tried this. Um, we have tried it ourselves. And actually I have been involved in, in the last 20 years at SAP of, of building supporting frameworks, basically taking some metadata from the backend and generating a UI out of this. Um, and this is also what MDC is about. So um, we have, Built certain controls. We will slow this, uh, show this in a second. Uh, and these controls, they uh, should ease the development if you build applications, if you build frameworks, and you can also build your own uh, controls this way. Um, as Stefan mentioned, but that might not be so interesting for, for those of you who not, do not know the old library for V2 controls. One of the things that we got as feedback for the old smart control was that they were. They liked them a lot, um, but they were tied to the old days of V2 model. And um, this is something that we have heard quite a few times that ah, it would be nice to have a smart table, but combine it with a JSON model, for example. And um, so, so as old days of V4 came along, uh, we also asked ourselves the question, should we use the last, the, the old library and tune it for Odesa v4. And I know there is a commit who did, uh, which did exactly this. Uh, so it would also have been possible. But um, as always, when you build a framework five years after, there are things that you would anyhow like to change. Yeah? And also, I think that one thing that we definitely knew uh, for a very long time was that it would be nice if you could combine more easily uh, the features that we have in the smart controls with uh, different models or protocols, or even also care for application-specific requirements that we do not really have any time to implement, or which is not high enough on the agenda that it will get to a backlog item. So this is also why there is a bullet point here, does not implement a specific model. Uh, this is in particular, if you know the old smart controls, uh, everything was baked into the control. So you only had to mention an entity set more or less, and then you were good to go. So in this case, uh, it's a lot more flexible, uh, but it comes with a price that you also have to, to do something, uh, at least as of now, because as of now, we sort of only provide this generic part, we'll get to this also later, and, and then somebody needs to provide this uh, model access and all of this stuff. Um, I should also mention that uh, few elements uh, that many of you might know, and also the flexible programming model, it uh, uses the, the MDC controls underneath, you could say, and uh, 
And the flexible programming model, if you look at it from an Odesa V4 standpoint, it's, it's a little bit like the old smart controls. Yeah? So if you have an Odesa V4 model and you want to build something like you knew from, from Odesa V2, it could be a good idea to look into this uh, more carefully. And one thing which is also interesting to mention is that uh, it is experimental, the library. I think Stefan also mentioned this. Uh, it is experimental, but we plan to, to make it non-experimental as of UI 2.0. And this means that, of course, if you play around with the library, it would be very interesting for us to get some feedback. Um, so to make it a little bit more tangible, what, what are we talking about? So, so which controls do we have as of now? So we have what we call a filter bar. This is, this is on top of the, of the table. There is a table control that we offer. We offer a chart that you do not see here. Uh, we offer, as I mentioned, all the value helps and suggest and type aheads. Um, we offer uh, a link, like a smart link that you can open and on the pop up, then you can navigate away to, to uh, another application. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's about it as of the controls. Um, but there are also some features that, that comes with these controls. Um, for example, is the user experience, uh, the latest and greatest uh, has been baked into these controls. Yeah? So do not, you do not have to care about, uh, they, they, should, they should be accessible, they should be from a user perspective, at least uh, in the eyes of SAP, they should be top of the pop. Um, and also, um, what is worth mentioning is that, uh, of course, all the UI5 concepts that you know, or you might know, uh, they carry over to this library, yeah, because it's also a UFI library. So uh, the enterprise qualities and all of this stuff, this is this is everything comes for free. Um, as I mentioned, but this is something that, that we will deep uh, deeply go into also later and maybe also in the expert session, there will be possible to, to get more answers to these questions because um, how did we then... Uh, build this generic library and how did we separate out the protocol uh, specific logic. We did this uh, basically through a delegate pattern. Um, that means that when you have the control, you need to specify some sort of class. Uh, and this class, we then have some callbacks that are specified up front. And, and then that means that we can, we can interact with this delegate and this delegate contains all the specific logic that is needed to interact with the model um, or send out the requests which are necessary. Um, one thing which is also important to mention, and this was also, a, you could say, a design uh, goal from the very beginning, that we wanted to have an easy access to personalization. So when you build a table, for example, and you have an enterprise application, you would expect that the end user can maybe choose the columns that uh, she or he would like to see. Or it def define a different order or define a specific set of filters that are relevant. And this is something that, that we also support out of the box when you have personalization at your availability. That also means key user uh, support for variants and, and the user support and so on. Everything that you know, which is possible, um, is supported in this library. Even a little bit better supported than, than we did it in uh, the V2 uh, smart controls library. Um, so if we go a bit more into the architecture, I mean, still, of course, this is very, very high level, but I think in, in 20 minutes, we will only have time for this. Um, so, so as I mentioned, it, the MDC controls, they rely heavily on, on having something which is called a delegate, which is a different class and which uh, simply implement everything which might be protocol model or even also application specific stuff. Yeah. Um, then you have the possibilities, but you also have the duty to implement it yeah, because uh, we do not have a setup at the moment where you can say, I have a JSON model, for example, and I take this control and then I'm done. So, so there is work which needs to be done. Um, but, but on the other hand, you have a lot of flexibility uh, that we were asked for a couple of times. And 
and this flexibility is then baked into to this delegate um, setup. Yeah. Um, clearly, you could also uh, extend these classes that we just mentioned. You could extend the filter bar, and I, I know we also did this, uh, and there are cases where this has been done. Um, so, so, so um, but this is standard. I think this is standard UF5 or JavaScript that you can, of course, extend the controls and you can then use your own special delegates. This is all possible. Um, one thing we needed to do this uh, abstraction from the concrete model uh, was clearly we needed uh, an abstract view on the metadata. So we have defined a protocol agnostic uh, set of metadata, we call it property info. And it contains, in particular, it contains the necessary metadata that we need for a fast initial startup. It was also one of the guiding principles as we built the library that we wanted to include everything in the view cache, at least it should be possible to include everything in the view cache uh, that you need in order to have a, a fast initial startup. It was one of the drawbacks of the old library that we needed to do something at runtime, which actually could have been done already uh, before runtime. Yeah. So it could have been cached, uh, and this is something which is now possible. So the metadata can be either provided directly in the in the view, uh, or you you could also provide it at runtime if it is uh, easier for you. Um, we are a callback, uh, one of those callbacks which I mentioned. Um, yeah, so so I think this is basically uh, definitely also one of the the, the key points that we want to um, to sell here is that uh, if you have flexibility, uh, then it's quite easy to to you simply get this for free when you when you have these controls. For example, a filter bar would be possible to persist a set of filters and in the uh, chart or in the table, you can define your columns or measures or dimensions. And then you can sort of persist this and the next day you can have this as a favorite, uh, your favorite variant, a standard variant. Uh, and then you do not have to do so tedious tasks each and every day. But I think this is standard for what you would like to require from a library. But, but uh, this is exactly exactly one of the things which, of course, if you use the standard M table, you would have to build something like this yourself. And uh, actually what you see in this slide is also that the uh, in order to use the flexibility, we have even abstracted this away as well in an engine, which is uh, located in the M library, as you can see here. So, and you can even then combine the M library with a different persistent layer if you wanted to. So if you would have no uh, flexibility, it, it should be possible, at least with UI5 uh, 2.0, that you could also, maybe even coming from us, that could be a persistence layer, um, which could be different from the flexibility layer. Um, yeah. And I think this is this is one of the yeah as I mentioned it already I think very shortly but but this is uh, I think an important point to take to take with you um, in particular if you are concerned about startup um, performance uh, so we have the possibility to do uh, pre-processing as we call it and uh, this is also what is being done in pure elements so. What happens there is that the metadata are being fed from the backend, of course, uh, the metadata are being interpreted. And uh, out of this, uh, an XML view is built. And in a second step of the preprocessor, this uh, flexibility preprocessor then kicks in and the flexibility preprocessor would then do the modifications on the resulting XML. And there would be sort of a, a final XML com coming out of it which would then also be sort of your, your cache. Um, and, and that means that when the, when the end user works with an application at the customer side, uh, it should be a rare case that it should be necessary to, uh, to, to go through this step, this preprocessing step, because normally it should be possible for the, for the user to simply uh, sit on, on, the, on the view cache directly. And then we only need at one time to, to create the controls. And clearly, when you want to see the data, 
request needs to be sent, but but uh, we actually have as a guiding principle that we would like to do an initial rendering without having a backend request. Okay, so key takeaways. Um, I think everything was mentioned, but but uh, I know that this is heavy stuff if, if you do not know about smart controls and, and even if you do, it might be a little bit confusing. So um, what can you do with it? You can build uh, new applications. Clearly you could also build frameworks. I think this is what we have been primarily doing. Uh, you might also get the feeling that when you play around with it, that, that uh, you need to do some stuff manually that could have been basically built in. And we might also do this later, depending on the feedback. Um, but it has been tuned, so to speak, for, for building uh, framework applications. But, but we hope to see, of course, that you will also find one of the other use cases to build your own applications with different protocols that have been asked for. Delegates are crucial in the sense that you will have to implement a delegate, which is not that much work if you not that much work if you know how to do it. But it's always the thing if you know how to do it and and where do you find the documentation and so on. I think we can improve that. We need to. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of features that you might want they come out of the box, and it is experimental. So if you build something, it could still change. Um, I do not think we, we will build everything completely different. We also do not have the time for this, but, uh, but depending also on your feedback, uh, that could be changes. Okay, that's it. Um, any questions? I think you need to get the mic, right? Uh, because we record this. Yeah, there was a question in the back. There's a question. But, yeah. I wanted to ask, do you have any code examples actually of what you just represented? Yes, so the, the, there are code examples. Um, I'm not going to show them now, but, but actually there is also a workshop this afternoon. And I can only recommend if you have any doubts, uh, it's, it's really a good idea to, to get into this workshop because there you will see and you will demystify, I think, a lot of this stuff. Uh, because I know that if you only mention it, it's impossible to understand exactly what it means. Thank you. Yeah, yeah if you go uh, to the agenda and then to the value help workshop at 1615, there is also the link to the GitHub repository with the explanation and some code examples. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think even with this explanation, just to maybe uh, expectation management, with, <laughs> even with this explanation, you might not go home and say, okay, now I understood everything. <laughs> so, so I think, nevertheless, the workshop will be extremely helpful because there you see real example and you see running code and you see what you need to do. Hello, my question is, what is the difference between MDC library and flexible programming model? Is it that uh, MDC library could be used in uh, freestyle Wi-Fi application? Yes, I mean, the, the, at the moment, at least, the flexible programming model is built for OData v4. And, and of course, uh, I know a little bit of the concept, so, so clearly they could also offer other protocols underneath because there are enough abstractions to, to do this. But you could say that it's, this is more sort of the base layer of everything which is being done. Yeah? You could even also build completely different uh, value helps, uh, which are, which definitely will not make it into FLP uh, to, to, to the flexible program model for, for the upcoming time. I think you can surely say this. And there, there are also a different stuff in the, the, the idea, I think, with the flexible programming model, I can say this with certainty because I was involved in so many discussions the last 20 years. And I think the idea with the, with the few elements was that it should be easy to build an application that you can also centrally change afterwards and everyone will everyone will uh, will benefit from this yeah? and the idea of the flexible programming model was that people said oh, okay but i want a little bit more flexibility uh, i might not use your floor plans i want to build something myself or i need a breakout and that was the idea of the flexible program model a little bit like the smart controls or data v2 but if you need even more flexibility as I said, you could also combine it with, with a completely different persistent layer, or you could 
as I mentioned, uh, builds completely different uh, filter bars. It doesn't have to be the filter bar that you see here because you could derive from these filter bars and still profit from the whole setup of the delegates, which callbacks are needed to do the right binding and so on. Yeah, because you need to fire the key when you, when you press and go. And all of this stuff uh, is possible with this library, but it comes with more work. And so you could say less work is for your elements, a little bit more work, uh, flexible program model, and a little bit more work even then is uh, the MVC library. But also when you go down this chain, you have a lot of more flexibility. Yeah. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. Okay. <laughs> Um, just one question. So um, as you mentioned that SAP Flow Elements V4 is al already using MDC uh, libraries and yes. but the MDC library itself is experimental. So does this mean SAP Flow Elements V4 is also kind of experimental or no, how would they no. affect it? No, uh, it was from the beginning so that they had sort of a special, uh, special status, you could say. They're not the only one with a special status, but we have different stakeholders and, and few elements is one of them with a special status. And uh, it, it, every time that we do sort of changes, which are then incompatible, we uh, yeah, have to clarify it with, with, with them, of course, yeah, so that they have time to react on it. But they also know about it, that it is experimental, so that we can do changes. And they have sort of promised us to then sort of, yeah, in a timely manner, then catch up with these changes. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not experiment in that sense. No. Okay, uh, still two uh, two minutes. So then, yeah, we can have the another question. My other question is: Will it work also with web components, or only sub M library, or I don't know sub UI, like for example, grid table? So, so at the moment, what what when you look at the maybe I go back to this slide. So what you see here. These, so, so when we look at the MDC controls themselves, they manifest themselves in the DOM. And so it's not like the, the flexible programming model where, where it's more like a, an XML uh, node thing. But, but, but actually underneath as a child control, you could say, you will find an M table or you will find a, a grid table, or you will find a UI charts, or you will find a, an, an input field, or you will find a text field. So, so this is so. So we are ourselves sort of using the M library and not the web components. Yeah, but yeah. it's a good question, of course. Yeah, it's a question which is, uh, in particular, when you have seen the keynote, uh, it's a question which you need to ask and. Uh, who knows what will be coming up there? So, then not one very last question in the back. I also heard of building blocks. Are building blocks based on MDC or how how is it? Yeah, it depends a little bit. I think the building blocks has been used the last years for many different things. So, so if you think about the few few elements building blocks, um. I, I'm not sure why exactly what the definition now is, but but I, I think the building block is used as a more general term of a complex control where you have included in our case, maybe a button in the filter bar and a link to the adapt filters and then some fields and so on. This is what we mean with a building block that you can sort of take and you can reuse it sort of uh, all over the place in your application. Yeah. But, but and, and I'm not completely sure about, I knew what the definition was at some time in pure element, but I think they, they have also changed it uh, at least one time. So you, you will need to check with, with uh, Fury but, elements. Uh, but I think the, the Fury elements building blocks, which have been presented, I think, yes, uh, last year in one of the presentations, this is basically the MDC controls then with delegates for V4. Yeah, I think with oh, an additional abstraction layer, but yeah. But, but, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, then thanks a lot. And thanks a lot, Thomas. Welcome. For also for being on time. And see you again in the afternoon. <laughs>